let's begin with the fibroids question please remember that we're not providing medical advice of any sort it has come from a viewer one of our videos on this channel they sent in this question which i think is very constructive because it shares the problems that women go through when we have fibroids and not just having the fibroid plus it's troublesome symptoms what a challenge in terms of getting treatment this but let's look at this question i'm in a situation where i have lots of fibroid trouble they returned some years after a myomectomy 12 years ago a gynae i loved prescribed slind which was amazing and also recommended nsaids i was doing great in regards to pain fullness and bleeding for a long time but then i lost access to slind and the gynae after a recent vitreous bleed in my eye, an ophthalmologist told me to reduce or stop taking ibuprofen. I wonder two things. Could you comment on whether reducing fibroid bleeding is different from effects NSAIDs may have on other bleeding in the body? Second, could you comment on whether opil, which is over-the-counter nogestural birth control, might also be effective in reducing fibroid size and especially bleeding? I've started taking it and so far I'm having lots of bleeding, but I'm willing to power through that if it's going to die down and leave me better off. I'm 54 and at my wit's end and I would like I would like to be an active swimmer again before I'm too old to enjoy it. Okay, but let me know if you have any thoughts or if you have any shared experience, something similar to this and you know what happened in your own case. I'm in a situation where I have lots of fibroid trouble. They returned some years after my myomectomy 12 years ago. She's had fibroids for some time. She's had surgery, myomectomy surgery that removes fibroids and as is a common experience they can come back after a myomectomy a gynae i love to prescribe this is a uh, the gynae prescribed slint slint is a progestogen it's actually one of the newer progestogens is a fourth generation type of progestogen these are synthetic or human made forms of progesterone so that's what a progestogen is we just call them first second third fourth generation depending on when they were developed in the market when they were and this one slint what's special about it is compared to the older ones things like levonorgestrel or noethisterone that you have in morning after pill this slint is supposed to have less androgenic side effects like acne less bleeding will be the experience for somebody who's taking slint and she said this was amazing and for her experience of bleeding with her fibroids and this guy in it also recommended NSAIDs NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, drugs Examples are things like ibuprofen, things like naproxen, um, methanamic acid. These are uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. And so you might wonder what is the relevance of that to fibroids. Well, when fibroids are happen in the womb, they stretch or distort the womb. And so they can increase because of that irregular bulky nature of the womb. There is definitely going to be an increased likelihood for bleeding. You have more muscle mass within the womb. You have more blood vessels and you have more chemicals being produced and you will have more bleeding and so that is what would happen but we have learned that NSAIDs can have some benefit on the bleeding from the fibroids so she was on two drugs to help to control her fibroid symptoms uh, neither one of them will necessarily shrink the fibroids but they can help contribute towards reducing the bleeding that you might experience on the fibroid she says she was doing great in regards to pain fullness that is or bloating and bleeding for a long time and then sadly lost access to slint and her gynae her beloved gynae after a recent vitreous bleed in my eye an ophthalmologist told me to reduce or stop taking ibuprofen to cut a long story short she developed i presume she may have experienced something called vitreous detachment which is when, you know, within the eye, there's a kind of gel-like material um, inside the eye that's sort of closer to the back of the eye, which helps in focusing and clarifying our vision. And, you know, it's there from birth. But the thing about the gel is as we grow older, it starts to become a bit more watery or fluid. And so the potential that it can detach from the 
retina, that is the back of the eye, increases as we grow older. Sometimes it's not common after surgery if you're short-sighted like me, but I think that's what she experienced. And then one of the complications of that is that she experienced abnormal bleeding. Okay. It could have, it was, this was in the eye, but it could have been in the stomach, anywhere else, really in different scenarios. But the bottom line is that something happened and then she experienced a bleeding problem. At which point the um, ophthalmologist says, stop taking ibuprofen. This is where her first question comes okay she says could you comment on whether reducing fibroid bleeding is different from effects of the NSAIDs may have on other bleeding in the body you're taking ibuprofen let's use that as our example of NSAIDs in this and we tell you your doctors will tell you that ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory drug but it does have side effects one of the most common ones that we will drum into your head is that it could cause indigestion heartburn because it's known to irritate the lining of the stomach and the food pipe so we ask you to take it with food, never on an empty stomach. But of course, it could have so many other symptoms. It could also cause bleeding from the different parts of the body. In fact, one of the side effects is just listed bleeding, hemorrhage. That's the side effect. So it's left for you to think, right, that bleeding could happen anywhere. One of the common sites sites is from the stomach so people could develop very serious bleeding from the stomach because they've been taking something like ibuprofen without any stomach protection why does it do that it's an effect of the drug um, it could irritate the lining of the stomach but it could also have an effect on the chemicals within the stomach so it can block those chemicals that cause the blood to clot Okay, and that's why something like aspirin, which works in the same class of drugs, is known as a blood thinner. Basically, if you're taking ibuprofen, one of the side effects is the effect of bleeding. It's different when it comes to the womb. This same drug and some drugs can have dual double effects in the body. This same drug in the womb can do something that appears different. So in the womb, it will block certain chemicals in the womb that promote bleeding, that open the blood vessels up. And this can affect people with fibroids who have heavy bleeding or people who don't have fibroids but experience very heavy bleeding and the chemical really is um, prostaglandin when you have fibroids um, that also makes the chance of bleeding a lot higher because you have more blood vessels to deal with when you take an anti-inflammatory drug like ibuprofen the effect in the womb is to block that prostaglandin and so it stops the effect of that chemical the effect of that chemical was to open up the blood vessels and promote bleeding but ibuprofen blocks that and so closes off or tries to close off some of the blood vessels and reduce the bleeding so going back to the question this is the benefit that friend here was experiencing with her ibuprofen it was doing that effect on her womb however the moment she had that bleed in the eye her eye doctor said to her stop or reduce the amount of ibuprofen because it could make the bleeding in your eye worse and bleeding in your eye the implication of that is potentially losing sight losing get going blind so that's why the eye doctor would say to her stop the ibuprofen and remember that she was doing great on her sling and ibuprofen for a very long time so now this is the crisis this is the challenge that we're having here of the three things <laughs> that we're keeping her symptoms nicely controlled so the first question, could you comment on whether reducing fibroid bleeding is different from effects? Yes, that's the answer is yes. There are two different effects um, because of the way this drug works in those different tissues. And of course, we have to look at the potential for bleeding and potential complication of damage to your sight. That is really important. And that is why your eye specialist has advised that you stop ibuprofen. So ibuprofen had that beneficial effect on your womb because of the way it was blocking the chemical that was contributing to excess bleeding with the fibroids present but ibuprofen also has a potential of worsening bleeding making the seeming to make the blood thinner and increasing the potential of more bleeding and since you've had a bleed in the eye we don't they did they, they didn't want to complicate that or make that worse the second question is could you comment on whether opil that is the over-the-counter or gesture birth control might also be effective in reducing fibroid size and especially bleeding the progesterone genes are different sling is a fourth generation while the nogestrol that's the opil is a second generation i think that where sling would have given you a bit of relief from bleeding. Uphill may not be able to do that job because it seems to have a higher 
potential to cause irregular bleeding than slend. That seems to be what is evident on paper, but is it worthwhile trying? It's probably worthwhile trying. We're all different. And the way that you respond to pill, I would keep it in mind that there's a potential that uphill might cause irregular bleeding it may not have such a beneficial effect as slind however it is reasonable for a period of time to use it and see what your how your body responds to this but of course you're sitting down with your practitioner your gynecologist your general practitioner to look at your own specific medical history your specific medical condition to be able to discuss what appears to be most appropriate for you the three month period is reasonable to assess three to six months if the bleeding is not horrendous it's reasonable to assess but i really empathize with your struggle i believe that at 54 you've still got many 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 more years of swimming ahead of you and i think you will achieve that i i think it's a good thing to sit down with your doctor and sort of place all the cards on the table what options do i have now and i know that one of the options will be a hysterectomy because it may be that at this um at your age they may not but they may so it's worthwhile having that discussion and i'm just sort of guessing because i don't know your medical background uh, menopause and things like that so there may be some drugs that they don't they feel would not be suitable but you know you need to have that discussion with them and see what are the options let them lay it out let them lay them out on the table then you go and have a think about them um, and then decide which works best for you. Um, thank you so much for sending in this question. I hope this discussion around it has helped. I think the most important thing is about having that conversation with your doctor.